morning. Here we are in my outside workspace. A little warm and muggy this morning, but I think I can manage it for a little while this morning. We're being infested by these caterpillars here in Arizona. They're just hundreds, hundreds of them walking past here. They're, um, they're the white lined sphinx moth caterpillar. I looked it up this morning. Anyway, I'm out here this morning, took the day off so I could play a little bit. Um, we're going to be making this really cute little pine cone gnome. What we need to make this little guy, I've got another one here I haven't painted yet. I put some stars on him. This one, when I get him painted, he's going to be for Halloween. Look at that, I put a little bat on him. So what we need to do this very simple project is some pine cones. I got these out of my neighbor's yard. You're going to want to clean these pine cones by putting them in a warm oven, uh, I think around 250 for about 30 minutes, just to kill any little bugs that might be in there. Pine cones, whatever size, I'm imagining those huge ones you can get would make really cute things too. Anyway, pine cones, foil for the hat armature. You've seen me do this before on my flower pot gnomes. Some twine and um, Elmer's glue all and cement all. Um, I have started for some of these projects, smaller projects like this, I've just been mixing the cement all with glue and some uh, tissue paper it makes a, a nice consistency clay and it sets super fast. You know me, I'm a little impatient. I don't, I don't want to wait a long time before I can paint my creation. Okay, so first thing we want to do is go ahead and make our foil armature for our little pine cone gnome hat. So I've got, I don't know, what is this? Just a little bit, about 18 inches and again, precision is I should have a t-shirt, no precision required. So about, you know, 12 inches, 18 inches of foil, and I'm just kind of folding it under because I want it to be not too tall. And then all I'm gonna do is just wrap it around my pine cone. Just kind of play in. Again, I find this fun because I can just play. I don't have to think too much. I do other things that require requires brain work and so I, I enjoy doing this because I don't have to overthink it I don't have to do too much with it and it makes it nice for me so anyway now we have our hat and we're going to take our hot glue gun and just put glue all inside our little foil hat this hot glue gun has been all over with me I'm telling you I've had this a long time this is my outside glue gun I have low temp glue guns I use inside. This one's for my heavy duty stuff. There we go. All glued inside. And now I wanna make sure I, I know where I want my beard and nose to be. And that's about there like that. I'm just gonna glue that on. Boom. Easy breezy. There you okay, go. so we have the little hat on the gnome. We want to uh, cut a piece of, of twine, hemp, jute, whatever. You know, you can get this at the dollar store, at the craft store, whatever. Um, I have about 18 inches here. I'm making it longer because I can always cut it off if I want to. So what I'm gonna be doing so that his legs will hang is I'm just going to this through as low as I can get it through the little spaces in the pine cone. I don't want it going too high because I want it to be down here where legs belong. So just like so. Moving it in between. What are these little thingies called? The little seed holders on <laughs> pine cones. I don't even know. I should Google that. Anyway, so I just got it woven through. You can put a spot of hot glue back here to hold it there or some tacky glue, whatever you want to do to make sure it doesn't move but it's it's in there pretty good like that so these are the legs and so however long you want those legs see these are longer 
these legs are a little longer than those legs so you can decide however however long you want your legs to be there we go but you want them to be a, a good length because you're going to put a double yeah. knot is that knot is what's going to hold the cement in place for your shoe so i just make this loop and put my string through it twice so it'll make a knot for the cement to grab a hold of this is what i'm going to put my boots on all right now it's time to mix up our clay and make our little pine cone. Here. Like I said, I've got five sheets of toilet paper shredded here in my little cup. I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup of Elmer's glue all. Two or three tablespoons. I'm going to use just a little dab of dish soap. I'm just going to stir this up. And you want to stir, stir, stir until the tissue paper disintegrates. So just until it gets pulpy. I added just a, just a splash, maybe a teaspoon of water in there also. It was a little hard to mix up. So there we go. Just kind of pulpy. Now all we need to do, because we're going to be working with a, a dry cement here, mask. Gloves, eye protection, here we go. So just about a, I've got a half a cup of cement all in here and I'm just gonna put in part of it. Okay, and when it gets too stiff to stir anymore, then that's where I'm going to turn it out here on my little Dollar Tree mat. These are like little cutting mats. And then we're just going to need the rest. It's still a little bit sticky, so I'm going to add a little more cement ball. I want it to be soft and pliable, but not too sticky where it's hard to handle. Those are coming off. A little petroleum jelly or lotion on your hands at this point to continue kneading it. Very nice. But at this point, whoo, that mask is hot. You can take the mask off. Um, you could take your gloves off if you want to. You're going to use lotion or petroleum jelly to um, lotion your hands if you want to. Or if your gloves are still nice, you can use your gloves. So anyway, look at this. This is really nice. It's pliable. This is going to set really, really fast because it's cement all. And that's why I will use this. Putting in the Elmer's glue... Um, and the water is what makes it more pliable and it doesn't just break apart, um, but it does set. And so I'm really enjoying this mixture, mostly because it dries really fast. And you're all learning, I have not got much patience. So anyway, we're going to now just apply, and you could, you could make this even a little more stiff if you want to, but we're just going to apply this now to our room here. Kind of flat it out. And I like to start in the front, knowing that right here is where my nose is gonna go. Like that. And just start spreading it around. Just like you've seen me do in my uh, flower pot gnome video. I'm gonna take my gloves off because they're making a wrinkle in my nose. put 
that nose right there. And then I'm going to build my hat around that nose. There we go. Want to keep this um, extra clay that we're not using kind of covered for a little while so it'll stay as soft as possible. But you do have to work super fast with this, uh, with this clay because it, it is cement all. You do have to move super fast with this clay because it is cement all and it will set very, very quickly. A little water and paintbrush to kind of help smooth out any of the wrinkles you don't want there. You might want to keep some of those wrinkles in for, you know, texture and character of that hat. It's a slouchy gnome hat. So just a little water added to that will smooth, smooth all of that out really nice. And then I'm going to take some more of my clay make a little rope out of it. This is going to be the rim of his hat. Like that. And just smooth it. Again, you just smooth it with your fingers because it's still very soft and pliable. Ah, playing in the mud. It's what I like to do. I'm looking underneath to make sure none of the foil is showing. It's never good to have your underpinning showing. <laughs> Alright. So I'm just gonna make a little a little ball. Kind of flat it out and I'm just gonna put that knot right in the center. Close it all up and then just just shape the shoe whatever that looks like in your world, what you want it to look like. I created it in a way that I can hopefully, I'm gonna put a hole here and go all the way through where I can actually put a shoelace. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if it works. I'm going to do my other shoe. Him. He's going to get all set here in probably an hour and I'd be able to go ahead and paint him. So we're going to come back and look at that in a little while. Okay, here we are. It's the end of the day. I didn't get back to this little gnome earlier like I wanted to, but we're here now. So here he is. Let me show you. He did set within the hour and so nice and hard and then Remember that experiment I was trying to see if I could actually do shoelaces? <laughs> Look. I could not be more happy. Shoelaces! <laughs> okay, I'll try to compose myself. I I just look. I I can't Look, shoelaces. <laughs> Why? I don't I don't know why, but I had to do it. I did it. It worked. And it 
turned out really I'm cute. I'm going to take the shoelaces out now because we're going to paint the gnome. I wanted to show you just the technique of, of doing the, the pine cone. You all know how to paint or you probably wouldn't be watching <laughs> this goofy video. But I'm just going to show a little bit how, to, how I do, not how to do, but how I do the paint on these little guys. And then, of course, you're going to just take this and run with it and do your magic, right? Okay, here we go. So let's do the white first on the pine cone. So just some regular white paint. And if this gnome is not going to be outside, right, uh, in the weather or anything, you can use any acrylic paint and um, it's going to be fine. So just a little white paint, not much. And I'm just touching the outer edges of the pine cone. Just so it looks not really snowy, but whiskery, of course, because our gnomes have white whiskers, right? But there are pine cones that have white tips. I don't know what kind of pine cones those are. So that's all I'm doing. That's it. Maybe just a touch more on that one. And you're using such a little amount of paint that it's, it's drying. Well, at least here in Arizona where it's, you know, warm and dry. Um, it's drying up pretty good. So, this is what you're going for. Just like that. And then the next thing, of course, you're going to do is paint so, this hat. Here's where you get to make a decision. Um, again, if you were to base coat this hat in white, let that dry first. Any color you put on top of it is just going to be more vibrant. You can just go straight on top of this with color and it'll look nice. It'll just be a little more muted. The upside to that is it soaks into the cement. So it's really um, whatever finish you're wanting. If you're wanting it more rustic, don't, don't do the white paint. If you're wanting it really um, vibrant like this red, I did a white underneath that. So um, I think for this one, I'm not going to do a white. I'm going to do a, a deep green hat and I want it to be a little more rustic looking and I'm going to do his boots um, black and dark brown boots because I've got these really lovely tan shoelaces all right so as you all know um, when I'm actually painting I get into a zone <laughs> so probably won't be hearing an awful lot of talking from me as I'm painting um, but I hope you enjoy watching the technique, and I really hope that you will let me know if you're going to try this little gnome here. So, let's get him painted up.
I am just loving these little shoes. Oh my heck. <laughs> there they are. Those are stinking cute. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you'll try this little activity here. Do this little project. Let me know how yours turns out. Let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, I hope that you're always finding some little inspirations here. If you're watching my videos, you've got some creation inside of you. So get out there and do something with it. Have fun. Don't overthink it. No precision needed. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye.